Yeah, right. Coke, Zoom, Zoom, <laughs> Kevin Joyce taking a quick sip. I'll do the same. Sponsored by Coca Cola. Yes, and fucking not even Geyser. This is my old man must have went to Redner's before the apocalypse to get fucking, I don't know, refreshing spring water, literally. I know. Well, I got the same one. Everybody's sold out. How you doing, buddy? Good. We're recording. Yeah, I know. This is Kevin Joyce, the man I work with all the goddamn time. Uh, I've mentioned you at least, I mention you often, especially when I'm talking about movies. I bring you up quite a bit. So I knew I had to have you on as one of the 20, regardless, because your knowledge is pretty fucking boundless, as a matter of fact. It's, it's beyond limits. It's, I, you know. And not exclusive to movies, TV shows, if not maybe more. So I, I think recently I've, well, you know, the past five, six, seven years, whatever, I definitely took in more television than, uh, than film, you know? Right. I don't know why, but. Well, because like the there's, there's, there's more of it. Right. There's a, there's a fucking shit ton of uh, yeah. content out there. That's why, that's why I don't even watch television. I think that's one of the reasons I don't get caught up in anything because there's so much to choose from. And it takes a lot of time really? to consume. There's almost too much. Well, and then when I start a show, I watch like an episode or two and then it's like, okay, I got to ride this horrendous bullshit show out for, you know, hopefully no more than three seasons. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, you'll give your honest opinion, and that's why I always trust the suggestions you make um, simply because you – I mean, you appreciate, since you're a connoisseur of film and television, you appreciate the same things, me as an actor, that I do and director of, well, of stage. You appreciate the same things. You appreciate what goes into making a film. You appreciate the direction. So you're a director's you know, sort of guy as well. I think I, I watch most uh... – content show tv series or or movies based on the director or the writer right like if i see you know what i mean if i see a a writer that i i like three years ago coming up with a new show i'm watching it Definitely. period yep you know but and i can actors, to that. actors are you know because when i hear you when we work together a dozen. i hear you that's the truth that's the truth but you do give homage to some actors but nicholas hearing, cage the way you talk about it amongst friends, you always do lead with sort of the director or the writer of the show you're talking about. You know what I mean? So you do yeah. actually, I don't know if you, yeah. So you appreciate that shit more. So I'd than, say the majority of my list too is, is, uh, you know, like it, it was hard to even pick one movie by the director and or writer because, you know, it's, it's all my favorites directors basically. And, and, also, least, but, and yeah. also why I planned on just a quick little introduction and just diving right the fuck in and spending as much time as Zoom affords us for free uh, on the content of your list. Because I know we're going to have a lot to discuss. So uh, without further ado, whenever you're ready in any order, um, let me know what you come up with. I'm, I'm ready. I was, this was tough. I mean, because really, like, I, I'm not joking. I had uh, 20 films here. And it probably could have been 50. Well, you know, I like, asked it, it, you before. My top, yeah, my top like five. Jesus Christ, next week it'd probably be different. You sent Tomorrow, me a list about at least 100 movies to watch when I've asked you before personally. And you comprised, I didn't, wasn't expecting this, but you comprised a list of like 100 things to watch. And I was like, oh, okay. yeah. Well, I figured you didn't have as you know, much to do like me. <laughs> Sit home. Well, I mean, but now I have a, a fucking a, something I could check off. All right, go ahead. Let me know. Anyway, I figured we'd go with an honorable mention first. I had to fit this in there, and it's I, I just watched it two nights ago again, and it's a musical. So I figured I'd go something either like a foreign movie or musical. Just throw it out there. We don't have to yeah. talk about it much. But a uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, oh. which I absolutely love, and it's it seems like a weird choice, maybe. No, it's not at all. But, a transvestite rock star but well, it's amazing for your average joe i guess maybe it might be but anyone who watches it has who secretly likes it no one's going to deny that it's that it's good i went to i went with my wife to see it on uh, broadway too and you liked was, it there too didn't you you fucking it was one of the greatest things i've ever seen yeah. it was amazing it was like a it was like a concert they had a live band on stage and um dexter was playing hedwig which was kind of oh, like that's right Really? But he was great. Amazing. 
yeah, you missed Neil Patrick Harris. Apparently, he's the the go to man. I know, I know that would have been good. But, That's a good uh, honorable, honorable mention though, because it, it is. It was good, and John Cameron Mitchell wrote and directed it, which I don't know. We were me and my wife were talking the other night about did he catch like you don't hear you don't even know who John Cameron Mitchell is really. No, like what else? so he did a few other things that you might know, like Short Bus and. Uh, which I love. I quote Short Bus pretty often. Short Bus, but they're off the wall. They're a little offbeat, and they're, you yeah. know, they are. They're like really, really micro focused little snippets of life, or like, um, well, weird life, odd life, glimpses into odd life, so to speak. On the Short Bus. Short Bus wise, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know. Anyway, that was my honorable mention. I figured I'd throw that out there. You know, I love just it. as something as a. <laughs> all right, here's my fifth. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go five to one, if that's all right. That works with me. You're the second okay. to do that. All right. So five is probably it was probably number one on my list for for years growing up. I love this movie. I still love this movie. I still watch it every time it's on television. It's uh, Stand by Me. Oh, yep. Directed by Rob Reiner, 1986. You know, it's like the quintessential growing up type movie where it, it almost reminds you of yourself every single time you watch it maybe not as like and then everyone picks who well who would you be who would you who would you think you are out of the group of kids i'd probably be ace oh the <laughs> group of kids no, i would fucking <laughs> put some steak in that. um oh. i don't know i i, I don't know probably i think i think most people think they're gordy i think really i would do. i would see you as um I don't know. It, uh, it's tough. I would see you as River Phoenix just because he's the biggest. Who the, who would be the biggest ball buster of the group? Instigator. You think? Probably, probably Teddy. You think Teddy's so? A chump. <laughs> he's, fuck, he's a psychopath. Yeah. Well, but I, but I don't know. They, all, they were all good. Yeah. Well, Chris but, was more like uh, Chris Chambers, River Phoenix, was more like a. Uh, like he tried to calm the situation down almost, even when right. Teddy was kind of doing the, the, the train dodge. But he was the one that everyone thought was bad, but he really had a heart of gold. He was like the soul of the yeah. movie, but he... But he did. He did steal the milk money. The sins of the father. I was going to say, you can't escape the sins of the past. You know, the sins of the father, the sins of the brother move on to the, the younger brother. You know? Yeah. But I, my way, brother probably felt that a little. You probably felt that a I little. did, of course. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were five years separate, just enough where I still felt the fucking waves of his... The, his wake at West Grant High yeah. School. But, well, you know. So anyway, too, Rob, real quick, Rob Reiner. I mean, I, I don't think people really think of Rob Reiner as a great director. Yeah. But I looked it up and I was like, Rob, I feel like I, I love all his movies. And then I looked it up and like in a row, within like not even 10 years, he did, I wrote this down because I couldn't remember. He did Spinal Tap, Stand By Me, The Princess Bride, When Harry Met Sally, Misery, and A Few Good Men. Right, and they're all that's like in a row almost. That's well, that's you know what? That's that's a fucking uh jam packed, awesome hit after hit after hit. Misery is one of my all time favorites. Well, he knows he knew how to handle he knew how to handle content, obviously, he did, yeah, because all those movies separately are completely different movies, but um, he crafted them the way they should have been done. Like, how that's different is Misery wrong, than Spinal Tap? Oh my god, it's 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 complete opposite. You it know, take, like a mockumentary and then a a horror type, like a psych, movie. psychological drama, pretty much. I well, mean, you would think that's two different people making those movies, but you know, yeah. And now he doesn't do anything except you know, eat cheeseburgers. Well, he did enough. Is that not enough Twitter. for you, Kevin Joyce? A it's fucking, not a he decade's worth of golden films. It is all right. It is. Cock and duty. <laughs> all right, fuck Rob Reiner. On to the next one, Meathead. All right, I'm going to go number four. And I know me and you recently talked about this movie at work. Uh, okay. And we're, we're saying, well, anyway, Magnolia, 99, P.T. Anderson. Yes, yes, yes. Which it's like. And you reminded really, me the other I, day, I, three hours. I forgot, too. Three hours. And it took me, I mean, I could have probably watched it in one sitting, but, you know, between playing video games and mm -hmm. sleeping. And, and you'd already seen it before. Really. So, I mean, yeah, taking it and taking it in strides. As on a yeah. rewatch, whatever. But don't forget, at one point, yeah, it does rain frogs. So, like, how many storylines do you have to go through in order for it to, at one point, rain frogs and for you to be like, okay. What a horrible ending, though. 
I know. I mean, it's either, it, what is it? Is it every time, the first time I watched it, I'm like, you know, I was younger. I was like, that's so fucking cool. I think it was just a, Raider, Raider Frogs. I think it was a mic drop as in like, a, I, yeah, if I could do this right now. That's what I, I think, think it was simply it. I think P.T. Anderson wrote 50 great scenes or, you know, 20 great scenes. I was like, oh, shit. How do I end this? Right. Well, that's what it was. It was a series of vignettes, and they did all happen to connect, and he did that really well and all that. But at the height of it, I think he finally realized this is so ridiculous and that to why not have, uh, you know, pay, you know, a wink and a nod and just have it fucking rain frogs at some point. Yeah. It is. It does sort of ruin the movie, though, when you're in the midst of it. You're like, oh, man. Because they could end it a different way, but, you know. What are you gonna do? And you know who was great in that movie? And I, I, I said it to you the other day. It was Tom Cruise, and I'm not a Tom Cruise fan, like That's at still, all. I agree, a hundred percent. Because I'm neither am I. A, there's no like a deep fuck. There's no other fucking Tom Cruise movie where it seems like he's done anything else but show up and <laughs> do his fucking yeah Tom Cruise thing. But uh, for Magnolia, he he fucking did something. He was great. It was I think, unbelievable. I think it's because he's probably saw a little bit of himself. In in that, that I just dude. I said that to my brother here. I said Tom Cruise plays basically himself. I think maybe right. he's probably a shittier person in real life. I mean, let's face it, Tom Cruise is a, a total piece of shit. Yeah. Oh, mo- yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. He like fucking, undoubtedly, he hosts uh, Scientology events with thousands of people and does like he's a fucking yeah. he's a he's a mental fuck he's a maniac. But he's a mental midget. He's a men- he's a mental midget. I almost did it. I try to stay away from, you know, my obvious fucking isms. You know. Yeah, but that's but one of the best midget. isms or you know <laughs> sayings ever. But no, that's and great. we were talking about specifically last time when we were talking about this. You you brought up the scene when where he's being interviewed by that woman, and April Grace. Yeah, and we were. Yeah, he's amazing too. Is that yeah? That's I, her name. Yeah. April Grace. I had to give appreciation to her during that scene. I thought it was really well played. Um, And I think that helps bring out a performance in him. You know, if she didn't do her job so well, you might not have got gotten the great moment from him during that portion. But Magnolia, I fucking love that moment. Also Marcy too. Marcy, Marcy. one of my favorite things ever put on. Unbelievable. Don't go down my motherfucking hallway. Don't stay the fuck out of my motherfucking closet. Yeah, I live like, alone. <laughs> yeah. I live alone. That may be true. What's your name? Marcy. Yeah, I live. Calm alone. down, ma'am. <laughs> I don't need the cat. I could. We we've done this before at length. Me and my old roommate Rudy, because we both collectively love that scene. We we play it out in, t- in its entirety. So I used to know every. And that's just you know that's one of like literally twenty scenes in that movie where you could memorize and do you know like a, a short of and you would be like oh, that's great on its own yeah suck my you know what i mean it's just great it stands julian, on its own julian moore and the pharmacy and then yeah. there's a whole there's just a bunch you forget about because that film is so long epic there's so many different little things and it's like oh yeah i forgot about that that's why yeah. it needs to have a rewatch and then my like simone daniel said in the, i have to watch the master first i've never I seen rewatched it on her on her uh you know, and her saying that, I was, I watched the first one and I was like, I was like, shit, the master. I'm like, she really liked it that much. I saw it when it came out in the movie theater. I went back and rewatched it. I'm like, holy shit, I got to put that on my list. So did like, you, all, you know, like, it, I liked, I liked it. I came like 10 times, maybe a hundred times more than I liked it. So she was time. accurate in saying you need to. She's right. Okay. Cause I need to watch it once, but if I know I need to watch it more than once, then all right. Okay. I'll, 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 it's I'll amazing. Settle Joaquin up. Phoenix, Bill Seymour Hoffman. It's like, how they didn't win an award that year it's because everyone only saw it once (laughs) then they all went and saw it again (laughs) you know what i mean well that sucks but all right continue on pt anderson like i said in the past video in general absolutely he doesn't have many bad movies i mean maybe the movie inherent vice was kind of a mess but i think that was like uh people said when i read reviews like after i watched it they said it was like the unfilmable book I I for, totally forgot about yeah. that. I really and I never it's I've horrible. never seen that one either. So supposedly it's a great book, but fuck reading, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a reader. You are a reader too. So I know. But go so anyway, on. all right. Carry on. Carry on. So number three again. This is a director. 
slash writer who I, I could have put any one of his movies on here, basically, but it's uh, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, yes. directed by Wes Anderson, 2004. It was also written, though, by Wes Anderson, Noah Baumbach, who's a really? great writer. Yeah. And obviously a great director now, too. What was he just going to say? Which one? What's that? The recent movie he did, Marriage Story, Noah Baumbach. Bro, I, had, I haven't seen that either. I'm it's so great. fucking behind. It's, it's a tough watch if you grew up with parents who, who split up. I heard it's Laura. Good. I heard it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Laura Dern is fucking awesome in it, though. Laura Dern was great. I used to, I, uh, I used to hate Laura Dern. Me too. But the older I get, the more I like her. Well, yeah, actor. yeah, she stayed consistent too, and it's not like her style has changed. It's just something out like maybe she's just been given parts now where you're able to see some of her better qualities but yeah she used to Marriage do that story. thing with her mouth when her mouth would look like i don't know like a like a sleeping mask it would is go this, back real far and she had like meth mouth but it is was, it in jurassic park that she does that she quite does a bit it in a lot of movies okay. I, I think she did it that was her thing besides well, being what isn't she bruce stern's daughter yes yes yeah besides that you know that's probably your thing at first right but <laughs> um Wait, what so was back it? to Life Aquatic. Life though. Aquatic, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think I didn't like, like, when I first started watching Wes Anderson movies, it was a recommendation from a friend of mine who I worked at Blockbuster with. That's right. I never heard of Wes Anderson. You worked at Blockbuster. I know. That's right. For that's a long, long time ago. <laughs> well, I mean, that's another thing that added to your, how things fell into your lap and where you sort of started building your library of fucking... Well, that was like before everything was streamable or you could download it from a torrent site. So you had to go to <laughs> primetime, blockbuster, montage video, right? It was a Hollywood video that was kind of like another a trash one. place, but it was still a place. that was the first but, uh, to go down too. When they all started going down, Hollywood video went first. We knew that was going to happen. Blockbuster lasted for a long time i think the last one they had it recently not too long ago they just had it finally the last one like closed officially did it yeah only like recently. alaska or, or oregon but it, or yeah but it's like been that. bankrupt and like i think that was just like people were just keeping it open you know they just blockbuster were... was magical though like really like when you were younger and you went to blockbuster well, and right. they had that that movie that you wanted where they only had like one or two copies it was like what when what happened when they didn't though how fucking pissed were you when they didn't the, the reason blockbuster then you had so to rent much. police academy or something you know <laughs> well the rewatchables but which i love them blockbuster's great because it promised a good night either there was a sleepover over happening or there was something else going on your trip to blockbuster meant that you were going to be having a good night anyway so you're excited to go anyhow but, and know. when you worked at Blockbuster, every week they gave you um, five free rentals. Which, which at a, that which time is crazy. seems like that's like ooh, but at that time that's like that was awesome because that's how everyone watched their shit. So you got to see yeah, everything. You, so you got free movies. You couldn't go home and just go on Netflix or download a movie. You had to either was, buy it, hope it was on TV, or hope it was at Blockbuster. That was like it. the equivalent now of like a private screening you guys got like private screenings you know before the fucking and they general gave you public a, yeah oh, sorry they gave you the movies before they came out too like they would get there a week or two ahead of time or whatever it was and you'd get to rent them so and that was so i guess whatever was west was there ever a wes anderson film in blockbuster did that ever come oh up? yeah i mean bottle, bottle rocket, rocket. Yeah. but uh when i remember when i worked there um well, Rushmore came out, but I worked after mm. that. It was uh, Royal Tenenbaums was was like the big movie. I think it was like 2001 or two wow, or something so yeah, like that. Blockbusters like held in longer than I thought, really. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And they sense. had like a, a hundred copies of it. And nobody rented it. What, so, the Royal Tenenbaums? The Royal Tenenbaums. I love that. I love another movie I love. There's not one of him. There, There's not really a, a stinker that I'm like, oh, I hate. There's some I like more than others, obviously. But there's no like fucking... That I can think of offhand, unless you know one. But I can't think Moonrise of Moonrise Kingdom, I didn't really like. Oh, that's right. That's That was the one. That was the one. That was when the kids like. got naked on the beach. and I think he was just. Stripped on her underwear. And weird. it was a, a little bit too. He was like doing an imitation of himself. But it wasn't like. An Isle of Dogs I haven't seen. So I don't know. That but was great. Really, I, I loved it. 
I remember you saying it was. But uh, I'm a Wes Anderson fanboy. Like, I know you are, which is I wonder why. Pathetic, so, but so why uh, Life Aquatic amongst all the other ones? Probably because I own a lot of art, and if <laughs> I didn't, I wouldn't feel justified in spending money on a ridiculous artwork hanging in my living room. It's you actually can't awesome. See it anywhere, but it it is, and you know what, Marinchak, Chris Marinchak gave me for a wedding present a of Steve a Steve Zissou, um, like a poster. Like you a know, print, was, though. Like a like, like a, a. It was yeah. It was great by a, a, a an artist. I can't think of his name right now. I can't see it from here. I've but seen uh, he also did like posters for you know concerts and stuff like that. But it's it's amazing. Yeah, because um, but Life like Aquatic. Cool I just no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's another movie. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. I like oh. to talk, but you know, especially when I'm telling people what to do. No, What's you're on topic. You explain you explain Life Aquatic. I'm the one getting the fuck off the fucking tracks here. It's another movie where I didn't really think it was that great. I'm the first viewing you know what i mean i was like oh this isn't as good as rushmore or royal tenenbaums but then when i started dating michelle about 10 years ago um she told me i was one of her favorite movies so we watched it i'm like oh, this movie's is do, is, do i really like it or am i just pretend i like it but no i i loved it and i love it now and it's i could watch it again that makes sense it's on. because with uh christopher guest best in show graham and i you know, it wasn't one of my absolute favorites. Well, one of the, it actually was, but once it became something that we collectively shared, you know, then it was yeah. like, you know, it was like best in show as always. So I can actually follow your logic there with that. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it means something in your life as opposed to, um, well, as well as being. Exactly. And that's, you know, that's another thing too. I was thinking like some of these moves, like stand by me, like I had to put that in, like that was, it just means something to me. Like there's right. a lot of movies that I was putting on my list. I'm like, are these really my? Th I don't watch them much, but every time I do, it's like it invokes a feeling, like either of like your kid or like just you know just memories or even like like you know renting it from Blockbuster with your parents laying on the ground watching a movie. Well, that's the power of. It doesn't have to be the greatest movie. You know? No, but like those. That's why this has been so interesting interviewing just random people on this subject because everyone's list has been completely different for the same reason you know what i mean yeah it's great it's all stuff but but they're all films that we all love <clears throat> so you know it's they've all been personal lists and that's what makes them at least m more interesting to me you know at least through the interviewing process anyway you know it gives you a little fucking snapshot of who you are you know yeah right. in a way but right. carry on where what are we at what do you got uh what are we We're running through these two you're on number two okay yeah Give Number it. two is Adaptation. Wow. All right. Directed by Spike Jones, 2002. Again, Spike Jones didn't direct any shitty – he didn't do a lot, but he didn't really direct any shitty movies, in my well, opinion. Well, what if, I was really hyped for Where the Wild Things Are, and then I thought it oh, was – I, so I forgot about that. But I don't think that was entirely his fault. I think that was just um, – because the way it looked and everything was set up to be really great, but something happened – Maybe what you know what script? happened? What they put Tony Soprano as the lead, uh, wild. Thing. Well, that could be that could be one of the reasons, you know, it, it, it was it wasn't Spike Jones necessarily, it was something went wrong with that movie because it could have been great. I remember the trailer came out and I was like, wow, that's gonna be something special. Just it just looked, yeah. it looked like a great melding of um, like fantasy, like how are you ever gonna make where the wild things are? And then you see that trailer and it's like okay um but it just fell short but uh yeah um, adaptation also it was written by um charlie kaufman right who's one of my who's who one wrote, of my personal favorite screenplay writers he's great i mean he wrote um the screenplay for confessions of a dangerous mind which is a i think a criminally underrated movie anyway um he also wrote eternal sunshine right of course yeah you know, he wrote uh, anomalisa Another one. New, New York. Oh, not least is great. You'll love I've it. heard you speak of it. I've heard. See, I'm embarrassed by my lack of knowledge with film, but I will say my motherfucking defense. I spend as my I create when if, if I'm you know as for as much as I don't consume, I create. That's the only reason why. But I do feel like you got to stop. I have to stop and like recharge, get back reconnected into the fucking the pulse of what the hell's going on. Ser it's like seriously several years i haven't you know been catching up i mean like you said you do a lot though it's not like you're you know i, I don't do 
any creating. But so I just sit there and consume. But you enjoy. You enjoy. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's but adapt or not adaptation. Uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind is the the uh, um, the story of Chuck Barris, the Gong Show. Oh, the, the Gong Show, oh, and wow. how he, he might have been like a CIA operative. That's but he also hosted the Gong Show during the day. You know what I mean? CIA right. operative by night. That sounds great. <laughs> That sounds great. That sounds Sam amazing. Rockwell is in it, who's one of my favorites. I, I love Sam. Sam. You can't beat Sam Rockwell. You really can't. He doesn't. Uh, can't. He doesn't do shit. You know, as far as I am, I, I love Sam Rockwell. Still gonna finish Moon. Started it, and never fucking finished it. One of these days, I will finish that movie. We're doing pretty okay. good. This is average. So adaptation yeah. was a strange average. one. The story of my life. Average. What? No, Me. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once again, I, I could now the second time I'll be cutting in. Why are we talking about my beans, man? Um, <laughs> so thanks for that. Uh, was a strange movie though because um, Meryl Streep's in. She's great. Chris Cooper, who I love, he's always great. Um, he's great. He needs to come back and do something. What does he do? I haven't seen him in anything. He's getting old, you know. He's up there. I, I want more. No one started really Cage enjoying him. In it. Yeah, and Nicholas Cage. Well, Nicholas Cage. Of He's course. one of my favorite actors. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Nicholas Cage. I do know this just, about you, Kevin. Just don't look at the the forty five shit movies he did. Well, that's that's true because amongst a lot of shit, the things that are good are really good. So, give credit where credits due. And mm-hmm. everyone should watch Mandy. Mandy is it came out maybe a year or two ago. It was so good. When I I nobody knows about it. it. I told you, I was like, oh, I'm watching it tomorrow. And then I just, tomorrow never came. But I, it's a, the trailer, I was like, holy shit, fucking hey, man. It's ridiculous. It looks you great. Know, it's just, it's Nick Cage ridiculousness. But it was good, too. I think whoever directed that, I forget the guy who directed that movie. He's going to be good. Right, and I remember you and I talking about him specifically and about how he's going to be good. I think he's Greek. Panos something. Yeah, yeah. Panos I... or something like that. yeah. It's all My Greek's back. a little off. But adaptation, didn't that win? Did that win Best Picture? I don't think so. I think it won some awards that yeah. year. I remember maybe it was Best Screenplay. Maybe it was Best uh, Original. It won something. It could have. Char- I, think, I think he won Best Original Screenplay or something. And I think maybe Meryl, there were some nominations or whatever. Well, Meryl Streep definitely got nominated. I mean, yeah, she always does. Deservedly so. It's just she's not that good. No, I'm just she's good. Yeah, she's yes, she is. She she won best actor in a support. Or no, Chris Cooper. Sorry, he won best actor in a supporting role. Good. Yeah, he got nominated. Street got nominated. Charlie Kaufman got nominated. Chris Cooper won. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a weird movie too, because we we talk about a lot. We'll not talk about this specifically a lot, but we were talking the other day about when an actor plays twins. Yes. Uh, like ridiculous. Like Ewan McGregor is in Fargo, the TV series. It's because I'll tell it you why, horrible. from an actor's perspective, why that never goes well. Because an actor feels obligated to have to separate the two people, you know, to do something. Yeah. So in doing that, they miss the point. They just need to act naturally twice. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I With thought- like, you know, whatever. You know, maybe instead of doing a different performance for the second twin, just make them a little chubbier. Because you know how there's always one fatter twin? Always. There's always, in your twin friends, there's one that's always chubbier and one that's a little skinnier. I dated the chubbier one, but I thought she was prettier. I'm not going to say who. But, uh, you know. I know who it is. But the performances never go well when you play twins. So, uh, yeah. I thought Cage was great, though. I said, I I think this might, like, deviate from the... Do you want to know why he didn't he have a didn't he have a different thing like uh, he wasn't didn't he have a different appearance as his twin? I think they both looked pretty much the same, but like their personalities were so different. Like he plays Charlie Kaufman, like the the story Cage plays Charlie Kaufman adaptation. Charlie Kaufman wrote the screenplay. Right. The movie is about Charlie Kaufman trying to add ad, um, make an adaptation of. Meryl Streep's character, Susan Marlene's book, which is real. Like, this is all real. And I guess when Charlie Kaufman, he, you know, he was uh, in real life, was tasked with this, he wound up getting writer's block 
and was like, fuck this. I'm going to start making stuff up. I can't write about flowers. You know what I mean? Like right. a movie about flowers is going to be boring. So he made up the brother. You know what I mean? That's like it. He you made just up need a, it's a device. So, That's I mean, it. as a writer, you're looking for devices or like, you know, it's like the mulligan. Okay. Well, we could, it doesn't have to be the mulligan. It could be a brother. It could, it could yeah. be just um, an antagonist. That's it. It's a, it's a device. I also read something that said that Charlie Kaufman, his brother, and Meryl Streep's character were all the same person. Some theory on that. But I, oh. I mean, I think that's kind of bullshit. It's just impossible. Well, see, I've only seen the movie once, maybe one and a half times, enough to remember it. But that's the thing. Oh, see, yeah. That was great. That was great. I'll tell you right now, that's great visual um, marketing. And I remember the poster for sure. I'll tell you, I'll, I remember that image at the moment you say adaptation, I think of the flower pot melding into the... Um, I saw it in the movies. Did you? 2002. I was a youngin. I was fresh back then. Well, and also going to the movies was still fucking fun. You were still loud. You can't go to the movies now. Well, <laughs> actually, you can't go to the movies now. <laughs> Even if you fucking wanted to. All right. Well, drum right. roll, please. Number one. Let's do it. No drum. Fuck it. No drum roll. Blue Velvet. Ooh. David Lynch. Written Ooh. and directed by David Lynch. 1986. David Lynch. He's definitely got to be one of your favorite directors for sure. He is. And this was, I, this wasn't, I got into David Lynch. I'd, well, you know, I was kind of young still, but it was, I would late in the game. You know, I obviously didn't watch this movie when I was three. 1986 right. you know but uh and i saw the least. first <laughs> the first thing i ever saw by david lynch was uh mulholland drive which is, blew uh, me away uh, yeah you know and i was i had it was one of like maybe the first like uh i don't know like out there type not linear movies you know like uh like something more artsy like that i ever I watched agree. yeah yeah and i, I would loved it. i could say that maybe the same thing for myself maybe mulholland drive maybe i'm it's it's hard to say, but yeah, it's all it's in there. You said well, so Inland I, Empire was the one Inland Empire. I remember you saying you didn't get through or couldn't get through or I never could get through it. No, ever. And I was just talking about really what or you know trying to actually watch it in one sitting, but I've never seen Laura it. Dern's mouth is in it. And who knows how that would go? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was from all the. Actually, no. She got her work because she was Bruce Dern's daughter. Um, I forgot. But she is good, though. I mean, I feel like we talked about Laura Dern a lot. That's a joke, world. Fucking relax. <laughs> you, you, this is just, I, all, all the scores of you out there, we fucking relax. But uh, yeah, a couple, we have like a couple more minutes to tap in on Blue Velvet. But David um, Lynch, I, I, I bought the um, Blue Velvet DVD. I never saw the movie. I'm just like, all right. This supposedly is his best movie. We were one of his best movies. I bought the DVD. I was living at my dad's house. I popped in the DVD player. My dad comes and sits down and starts watching it with me, which, you know, for the first half hour, it's okay. And then Dennis Hopper gets there and he starts huffing his uh, personal tank of nitrous. And he, well, then he rapes, he rapes Isabella Rossellini. I'm sitting there with my dad. And <laughs> it's quiet. It I'm, ass I'm assuming, I'm assuming there's just a lot of quietness. So you're, so you're both watching just watching we were cheering <laughs> <laughs> we were high-fiving like yeah <clears throat> that's another movie that i when we were uh, you know i probably still know that i quote all the time you know like fucking it's it's just so it's so quotable i mean that's my thing with blue velvet when my father's girlfriend was just who i couldn't believe when she's like oh you know a movie i used to love blue velvet and i was like well, okay um i I have to rewatch. That's one of those ones I have to rewatch because it's in the fuzzy category of uh, Mulholland Drive, really. I have to go back and revisit David Lynch in general. Um, I think Blue Velvet's probably the one of, well, you know, it's one of his easier movies to watch. The it's, most, uh, yeah, the most palatable. Yeah, it's so, and it's so good. I mean, like I said, Isabel Rossellini's great. Um, Laura Dern's. Kyle McClendon. She's really young. She's really young, Laura Dern. And um, Laura Dern, saying. yeah, she's got to be really young in that. Well, yeah, in her twenties or so. Yeah, and she looks. She plays a high schooler. You know what I mean? So she's she. So looks, maybe even it, younger. It might have been her first movie. I don't know. Yeah, I know she's in it, but God, yeah, yeah she might have been super young. Because Dennis Hopper though is just 
Uh, it's just unbelievable. Dennis Hopper re- unbelievable. had a lot of fantastic moments in, in his day. He really did. He And hopefully he still does. I think he might still have one or two in him. He might have a comeback. He's dead. Did he die? Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Don't you love when that happens while you're filming something? <laughs> Fucking Dennis Hopper. He's dead. I see. I loved him so much I didn't even notice his passing. I think he's dead. I hope he – well, I don't hope he's dead. I hope I'm right about it. Yeah, folks, check on I hope that. I'm wrong about it, actually. I hope I'm wrong. Again, the I scores of you out there, uh, don't <laughs> don't be mad either way if he's dead or alive. Dennis Hopper, uh, hey, hey, I'll take that Chesterfield now if you don't mind fucking – Oh, that's so bad. I, see, like, that was my favorite movie for a long time, and I just didn't even – well, again, a true romance. So yeah, I mean, don't worry if no one else does. It'll be on my. I'll. I'll it'll be one of the ones I speak about. I already have. Um, well, it's, we're, you're going to get up to a hundred, and then you're going to be number one. But so far, the so this, you know, however many episodes I, we don't, I won't say, but you know, we're up to a certain amount of videos or movies. Videos, Jesus Christ, we're up to a certain amount of movies, and they're all different, and they're all nothing is. Um, repeating i don't see any worlds colliding yet because everyone's been so different i'll tell you boogie nights probably would have been on my list but i watched the first one and and, uh simone put on there i was like "Ah, i can't that's the thing everyone who i plan on having on watches you know watches them and then sees and 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 sort of then adjusts their list accordingly and that makes you maybe think harder you should get an air horn if somebody repeats (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm still working on little fucking quirks and you know i'm gonna my computer might break right now so you know every zoom cast i get out is i'll end it here too because we're running out of time is a fucking fart in the wind you never know because like i say until yeah. this shit uploads this never happened you know what i mean which That's was great because it was great talking to you because it was a wonderful this was great yeah i know i haven't seen you in a week it's... i know well you stay safe give michelle my best say goodbye to the world same to you. Joyce. All it's right, been guys. It's a pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you.